Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to those of you who are in the United States and good morning for those of you who are listening in from Japan. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, in our seminar, New Views, the Influence of Windows on Architecture and Society Today. My name is Yuko Kaifu and I'm the president of Japan House Los Angeles. We're so excited to present today's panel discussion featuring Dr. Igarashi Taro, who is the director of our current exhibition, Windology and LA-based architect, Mr. Yanai Tadashi, uh, sorry, Yanai Takashi. Moderating today's discussion is Ms. Fiona Wilson, Asia Bureau Chief of Monaco Magazine. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Japan House Los Angeles, we're the public and cultural diplomacy initiative launched by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, showcasing various aspects of Japan in wide ranging areas. We're located at the heart of Hollywood with a gallery, library, event hall, and restaurant and retail spaces. Due to the current pandemic, our facilities are currently closed to the public, but we have been presenting many webinars and online programs like the one that we are hosting today. Today's program is related to our current exhibition, Windology, Architectural Views from Japan. A virtual tour of the exhibition is available on the Japan House LA website. As you can see, my, my virtual background depicts uh, exactly how it's been set up at the gallery uh, in, at uh, Hollywood Highland. You, you could get a close-up explanation about the, about the exhibition on our virtual gallery tours. So I hope that you would be able to visit there. The exhibition focuses on the function and meaning of windows from architectural and cultural perspectives. In the current pandemic, windows play even more important functions as they not only separate indoors and outdoors, but also connect us to the outside world as we spend much more time indoors. I hope you have a chance to really visit our virtual gallery but then I'm looking forward to having Dr. Igarashi talk more about the exhibition. We'd like to dive into the program, but before we do that, I'd like to make a few housekeeping announcements. Before we start the program, this webinar is uh, being recorded for architectural ar archival purposes. Everyone except for the speaker are muted and video turned off. The audience chat is disabled. Once the dialogue starts, simultaneous interpretation is provided by our interpreter. Please select on the globe icon at the bottom of your screen, English, Japanese, or off, if you prefer listening to their native languages, but uh, you can choose between English and Japanese. Please send questions anytime during the program by using the Q&A functions on your Zoom menu bar. We'll try to cover as many questions as the time allows, but please forgive us if we cannot answer your questions due to the time limitation. Now I'd like to introduce our distinguished moderator for today's discussion, Fiona Wilson, Asia Bureau Chief of Monaco Magazine. Fiona Wilson has been a notable presence and leading figure in the design journalism. She spent seven years at Wallpaper Magazine prior to becoming Asia Bureau Chief at Monaco Magazine in 2010. She lives in Tokyo and has worked on many publications that feature appreciation for and understanding of Japanese design, architecture, culture, food, fashion, and current issues. Fiona, I'd like to turn the microphone over to you. Thank you for joining us from Tokyo. Thanks very much, Yuko-san. Uh, wonderful to, uh, to be joining everyone today. Uh, I don't have a virtual background. This is in fact the Monocle office in Tokyo behind me. And it's an incredibly sunny morning here in Tokyo. I'm thrilled to be joined in Japan by uh, Professor Taro Igarashi and in California by uh, Takashi Yanai. Uh, and I just say a bit both about each, each speaker. Professor Igarashi is the director of the exhibition that's currently at Japan House LA Windology. And if you haven't seen it, I urge you to do so. Um, I was amazed to find that I could actually watch it from the comfort of my desk, which was a, a bit of a surprise and absolutely wonderful. And it's, it, it opened up so many thoughts in my mind. Uh, Professor Igarashi is an architectural historian. He's a critic, teacher. He's a general supervisor at the Window Research Institute in Tokyo, which looks at the role of windows 
in society and architecture and culture. Many strings to his, uh, his bow. Uh, he's also been a commissioner for the Japan Pavilion at the Venice Biennale. And now to Takashi Anai, who born in Tokyo, but raised and works in California. He's a partner at EYRC Architects where he heads up the residential studio. He's a, he's a kindred spirit too, as a former design journalist. Uh, he worked for GA Houses in Tokyo, which a uh, very excellent publication. And his work is very much rooted in California and the Californian landscape, but it's infused with uh, influences from Japan, which he will talk to us about. And he's also been appointed chair of the American Institute of Architects Committee on Design for 2021. So moving on to the, uh, the subject today. Now, Professor Igarashi's work, it covers a subject uh, that I've thought a lot about over the years. I've written a lot about traditional and modern Japanese architecture. And I think one of the interesting things to think about when you think about traditional Japanese architecture is really to forget about the window as this fixed glazed panel. It, it's, it, there may not be any glass, it, it's a movable wall, it's a sliding screen, it does separate inside from outside, but it, it has many different roles. It can frame views in very specific ways, can be removed entirely if necessary. So it's a, it's a subject that's got so much to think about. And, Professor Igarashi, I wonder if we could start with you maybe, and you could tell us about the exhibition and what, what you hope people bring away from it. あ、ま、その成果を一度大きな展覧会と国際会議として2017年に開いたんですけれども、えっと、今回あのジャパンハウスの海外の巡回の企画にえっと採択していただいたということで、これまでのと窓枠のま、様々な成果があるんですけれども、ま
あるいは日本の近代建築における、えー、工夫であるとかさらには、まあ、あのこれは本当に、えー、いわゆる現代的な、えー、と日本の建築なんですけどもこういったあの前衛的な建築家がさまざまな新しいタイプの、えー、窓っていうものを、えー、作り出していますので、えー、そういったことを、まあ、写真を使って紹介しています。あとホームページを、えー、と見ていただくとあのこれまでの窓学の成果をいくつかのリーフレットで、えー、バイリンあ英語でも読めるようにまとめました。これはあの確かホームページからダウンロードできるようになってますのでぜひ関心のある方は、えー、読んでいただければと思います。とりあえず僕からまず簡単な展覧会の概要を紹介させていただきましたのでまた細かい個別のパートについては後ほど、えー、議論の中で紹介していきたいと思います。Thanks so much.、Um, I can confirm that you can download those booklets because I've been working my way through them and、uh, thoroughly enjoying it. I have to say, one of the aspects of the exhibition that really interested me,、uh, you know, sitting in Tokyo, but was this amazing 3D model that you mentioned of the Chashitsu, the tea house. It's absolutely remarkable. I didn't realize that that was quite a common way of creating the tea house that you would make a 3D model in paper. But I was interested as well in, in the way that windows are used in the tea house is, was really interesting to me. Can you just say a bit more about that? えっとそうですね。あのまあ日本の場合はえっといわゆるまあ,あの西洋でいう建築家っていう職能の人が、えー、まあ大工さんが代わりにいてですねえっ、ー、とちょっと違う形で建物が作られていたんですが。えー、と茶室の場合は、まあ、あのさらにまた変わっていまして、まあ、あのお茶の、えー、なんていうんですかマスターというか師匠が、えー、かなり建築の細かいところにも、えー、空間のことを考えていたんですね。でその時に、えーまあ、具体的にあの大工さんに指示するために、まあ、ある表現形式として紙の,、まあ、あの模型を使ってたんですけどもこれはまあ非常にあの便利で。あの折りたたむとですね本当一枚の平らな紙になってですねいわゆるポップアップですねあの飛び出す絵本みたいな感じでパタパタと,、えー、と開くと立体化してでこれを使ってですねあの茶室の写しっていう、まあ、コピーを作ったりだとか、えーまあ、そういう建築の表記の方法においても、えー、非常に特殊な方法,方法がありました。これは他の日本の建築のお寺とか神社とかでは使われていなくて茶室に関して、えー、使われたという、まあ、非常に、えー、ユニークな、えー、建築のプレゼンテーション、えー、図面の、えー、方法でした。And I, I was very interested in the way it's described in the exhibition that windows were used in the c h a s h i t s u very specifically to create a certain effect to bring light in at certain moments and I was thinking you know I think in Western architecture, we often think about windows bringing light in. We just think about that bringing light in. And I was really interested in this idea of light being a bit like nature, something to be manipulated for effect.、Um, and of course, you know, the, the, the master text for all these things being、uh, Tanizaki's、uh, In Praise of Shadows, which is, you know, so interesting on that aspect of, of light being filtered through.、Uh, A screen or through architecture. And can I, I wanted to bring in、um, Takashi Yanai here because I know you're also very interested in Tanizaki. And I, I think, you know, if we're thinking about bridging Japanese and Western architecture, you're a very good example. You know, you're, you're born near Yoyogi Park, near where I'm sitting、mm-hmm. right now,、yeah. raised in California. And I think your work is informed by a Japanese aesthetic, but it's absolutely. Rooted, beautifully rooted in the Californian context. So, I wondered if you could talk a bit about that influence on your work and maybe more broadly about Californian architecture. Yeah, so thank you, Fiona, and thank you also, Kaifu san, Aria Tras, Sky, and everyone else at Japan House for putting this together. As Fiona mentioned, I was born in Japan and now I live and work in California. And that、uh, duality of the two cultures has always been an interest of mine. And over the years, has increasingly sort of penetrated the work. So I'm drawn to work by such artists like Isamu Noguchi, who navigates this symbiotic relationship between California and Japan. Here is a photo of California scenario, a landscape courtyard in Costa Mesa by Noguchi in 1982. It's considered by many to be one of the more important sculptural gardens in America. 
and I would stack this up against his studios, both in New York and in Shikoku. Um, and I admire it mostly that while it has a Japanese influence, it clearly is a regional garden reflecting um, themes of geography from California and of course the plant material. So in our own work, um, increasingly I like to draw from traditional elements that inspire me from traditional Japanese architecture, but I try to do it in a non-literal way. So for instance, the tokonoma has always been an interesting sort of architectural device for me. So this would be how we might reinterpret it for a house we did in Beverly Hills. It's a contemporary uh, interpretation of the tokonoma. It's an anchor to this living room. So it's a niche that allows the client to display their art and objects in a way for the architecture to be a vehicle for that expression. It's a window, if you will, into the lives of the client. A little close up, you see the flower arrangement to reflect the seasons or the occasion. And I kind of threw this in there too. This is a fun image. Um, so this is framing for another project, now complete, but this was during construction. And this is framing actually that eventually is going to be covered up in drywall. But in the meantime, the construction workers have taken the time to deliberately place this vase with flowers in this niche. So in essence, they've created their own little tokonoma on the construction site. And I always thought that it spoke highly of the degree to which the workers in this case care about their craft. But this is a triptych of photographs by Hiroshi Sugimoto of the Schindler House. As part of this architecture series, they are intentionally blurred, as you can see. And the idea is that by blurring the image, you distill the architecture to its essence. Interesting to me, and Fiona touched on this, that they have always reminded me of Tanizaki's essay in Praise of Shadows. And I think it's really difficult to have this discussion of Japanese aesthetics and its influence on the West without mention of this essay. So here, there's just something about these images about the composition of forms and how they interact with light. And the Schindler House is of particular interest to me because if you look at it in that sort of context, it clearly expresses a Japanese influence. So Rudolf Schindler came to Los Angeles to work for Frank Lloyd Wright at the turn of the century. And in the meantime, Frank Lloyd Wright was spending a lot of time shuttling back and forth from uh, to Japan, where he was working on his commission for the Tokyo Imperial Hotel, which was completed in 1923. And uh, Wright had been going to Japan since the, the early 20th century, since around 1905. And he was keenly aware and he was inspired by Japanese architecture. So you can imagine that Wright would come back from these trips um, and share recollections and images of the architecture he encountered in Japan with his young staff. So by, by the time Schindler designed his own project, his own house, the King's Road House, which was also completed around 1923, he absorbed whether consciously or subconsciously a lot of these lessons. So you at once see in the house, the humility of a tea house and also the majesty of uh, Katsura Palace. Um, you can recognize in the Schindler house, all these ideas about materiality, the sliding doors, flexibility and transformability. And of course the connection to the outdoors. So these are ideas that we explore in our own work. So here in a house that we did in Northern California, and here we're paying homage to the materiality and craft and even the vocabulary and geometry of the King's Road House. So we're extending the materials from indoors to outdoors and likewise and vice versa and bringing the landscape into the house. So another tradition uh, that is inspirational uh, as a tangent point for me would be the contemplative garden and Japanese landscape in, in general. So here, of course, is an image of Yoanji in Kyoto. And here we interpret those sorts of approaches to the Japanese landscape for California. So here we've created a contemplative garden as a layer before you enter this house. It's a pause before you enter. And the ideas are familiar. It's a courtyard. But it's not literal. We use instead California native plants and climate appropriate planting. And this leads then to the main space of the house, which has been completely opened up to the view. Sliding doors, uh, in this case, pocket completely away and you recognize the sense of spatial layering. 
It's a reinterpretation also of the Ngawa before the view. The house then frames a, a larger borrowed landscape view of the Pacific Ocean. So this is an approach we see in, uh, in this photo of Katsura by Yasuhiro Ishimoto. These photos were used to illustrate a seminal book called The Tradition and Creation in Japanese Architecture by um, Walter Gropius and Kenzo Tange, who in the book cite Katsura as a pivot point between traditional Japanese architecture and modernism. We explore similar ideas about framing a view, again, the sliding doors, the borrowed landscape. Another example, similar elements here, also a reinterpretation of the Angala in a contemplative garden. And sometimes this sort of thing happens on both sides of a space. So you view through the entire room, the entire house becomes sort of a frame or a window, if you will. And the room essentially becomes covered outdoor space. So blurring the boundaries between indoors and outdoors, that's what we're doing. And to the extent where we can speak of the outdoor spaces as outdoor rooms, and the interiors as interior landscapes. This house is called the Spectral Bridge House, and uh, it was actually a collaboration with the artist Johannes Giordoni. He's a light and space artist in the tradition of Terrell. And the project was very much about this confluence between art and architecture. The entire house sort of erodes that clear distinction between interior and exterior space. But what I wanted to show you was this particular moment in the house that I find very interesting. So this is the spectral bridge itself, which is, uh, it incorporates light and space art. It's an installation as part of the house. And uh, I, I enjoy this image in particular because the art, which is, is unto itself a kind of window, it emits light, but it's also bringing in light and the view and the context. Here you see things collapsing in many ways, art and architecture. From inside the glass, you see the house itself. So you're inside the house, but you also have a view of the exterior of the house and the roofs of the neighboring bungalows. You see the neighborhood context. And you also sense the time of day and maybe even the time of year. So it's a kind of existential window that locates one in the world. Now shifting to this photo by my friend Nori Minami from his book, 1972 about uh, Kishokuro Kawa's Nakagain capsule building in Tokyo. So there's uh, obviously an anonymity and a homogeneity to the windows here. It's a, sort of a language of uh, relentless, infinite, undifferentiated windows. Yet from inside this round window, one in each capsule, the window becomes a foil or a backdrop to the specificity of each resident. Each window offers its own distinct view of the city and each space is a ves vessel defined by its occupant. So the window is a medium through which the individual engages the world and vice versa. So sometimes a window to landscape in our work can be quite controlled. In this case, this is a, an infill, it's a project on an infill lot. So what we wanted to do is create a sense of privacy from the neighbor. We wanted a window, but if we had a window, we would be looking at the side of their house. So instead we created this little courtyard so it's a, both a contemplative indoor and outdoor space. You get a piece of the sky, a beautiful potted Palo Verde tree. And uh, you know, if you open that window, you might even smell the nearby Pacific Ocean. So it's uh, something that connects and grounds you to the world outside. And this is a simple kitchen window, just facing a, a side yard, but it's an opportunity to bring in the lushness and greenery of the garden. So windows can bring nature into the house and uh, make it part of everyday ritual, such as cooking in this case. And then through the availability of large sheets of glass, sometimes an entire room or structure becomes a window. Here you get a view from a garden all the way through the window to another garden. And the building itself can become a device for framing. So the materials extend from exterior to interior. The ceiling is extending from the interior to the exterior through the full height pivot glass doors to the view beyond. In the simplest sense, obviously, windows are there to frame the view. And when the view is significant or magnificent enough, then the architecture begins to fall away. It's not about the architecture anymore, it's about the landscape. And we sort of push this idea to the extent that now it's not a window, but a house that is framing the landscape. The house itself is becoming a kind of window. So you have the foreground of the manicured approach landscape. 
And then you have the borrowed scenery in the back. Again, the house is on the periphery, it's pushed to the periphery and it's a way to frame the landscape and locate one in the world. So here you can see how the windows reflect the view. And now you also see that, that the pool itself becomes a kind of window. It's an apparatus for viewing and amplifying the view. There are many ways in which architecture becomes a window and vice versa. So this is my last slide, but I did want to take the opportunity before we get on to our conversation to thank Professor Igarashi for uh, bringing us this exhibit and sharing his research. It's made me think a lot about architecture and the architecture of windows and in ways that I had not previously. So with that, uh, I return to uh, Fiona. Thank you so much. My goodness, what a selection of images. Uh, there's so much to think about there. It's fantastic to see your own work. Uh, also, I, I mean, always good to see Schindler House. And I, I can never quite get over that you hadn't actually been to Japan when you designed that house. It's still hard to believe. And I was, I was also thrilled to see Nakagin Capsule Tower, which is a building um, I'm very keen on and have visited quite a few times. I'm very sad to say it's on its last legs. Yes. And I wonder how long it will be standing, but it's such a good example for this conversation because when you're inside the capsule and you've got that porthole, which that's your view of the world. And it's, I find that the place is quite claustrophobic, to be honest, but that view of the world, and depending where the capsule is, that is your perspective on the world. Professor Igarashi, I just wondered, I mean, there's so many images there, but I was wondering if there was anything you particularly wanted to respond to in that, that lineup. あの、出させていただきいったえ、で、あの、
もので、実は、えー、とこれとまた逆で、むしろ壁に穴を開けるっていうタイプなんですね。あの日本の中世になると、こういう、えー、下等窓っていう,こう先端がくびれたアーチ状の窓が入ってくるんですけども、これは中国から禅宗とともにあの入って、あの建築に入るんですけどこれはやっぱ壁に穴を開けたっていうタイプの窓でまあ今左の写真もこの窓から庭を見るっていうそういう構造になってますしでそれをさらにまあ徹底的に追求したのが茶室で茶室っていうのはあの小さい閉ざされた箱があって箱に穴を開けていくっていうまあ伝統的な建築とは実はあのまた違うタイプの発想なんですね。ただちっちゃな建築なのにいろんなバリエーションの窓あるいは数が大変多いっていう意味でこれまた非常に特殊な建築になってまして、まあ、これはあの構造とあの窓の衣装をこう切り離したっていうところからも成立した部分があるんですがで今回その紹介した実はこの用水亭っていう建物は、えー、とおそらく最大だと思うんですけども。えー、13個窓があるっていう多分こんなに小さい建築で13個も窓があるっていうのはあの他に例がないんじゃないかっていう非常に特殊な建築ですね名前もあの別名13層っていうあの13の窓っていうのが、まあ、あの名前についています先ほどあの柳井さんのスライドの中で、えー、黒川紀章さんのカプセルタワー紹介されてました黒川さんって非常に茶室が好きだった人であ,のあれはやっぱり現代の都市における、えーまあ、ある種の隠れ家的な茶室をこう、まあえー、工業化して縦に積み重ねたものだと思うんですね。で、えー、とただもう一つ面白いのはあの時代背景を考えるとあれ1970年代の前半頭なので、まあ、ちょうど手前にあのえー、宇宙開発ですねあのアメリカと、えー、ソ連が宇宙開発を一生懸命やってあのあやっぱ宇宙,宇宙船のイメージも非常にあると思うんですあの丸窓っていうのは。なので、えー、と非常に伝統的な茶室の,あのイメージがあの丸窓でもあるんだけど一方で、えー、とてもこうハイテックな未来的なイメージの宇宙船の窓みたいなのが両方重ね合わせられていて。やっぱ丸い窓って非常にあの面白くて一方ではとてもシンボリックな表現になるんですね。これヨーロッパだとあのゴシックの大聖堂のバラ窓なんかが典型ですけども、えー、やっぱシンボリックな窓であの茶室なんかにも丸窓が出てくる大変精神性の高い表現になるんですけどただ一方で実は丸窓っていうのは構造的な合理性がとてもあるのであの船とかあれ潜水艦とかも、まあ、潜水艦もないかもしれないんですけど、まあ、いわゆる過酷な環境の中で、えー、と強度の強い窓を作るとやっぱり必然的に丸い窓になるっていうのがあるんですよね。なのでまあ宇宙船が丸い窓を持ってるのはやっぱそういう合理性があるのでそういう構造的な合理性と象徴性のこう両面を持っているっていうのが丸窓であのそういうところをあの黒川さんのカプセルタワーで、えー、まあこう重ね合わせたんじゃないかなっていうふうに思いました。Thanks, that's, that's so interesting. I did particularly like that Fumiko, Fumihiko Maki quote.、Uh, I think there's something so true in that. And I, I've i often thought that、um, you know, part of the beauty of these, these traditional buildings is, is in the carpentry, it's absolutely in the skill of creating the buildings. And it's quite hard to replicate that. And I was thinking about a house I was、um, uh, very keen on. Let me see if I can just share this、um, image. This is、uh, Lillistrand House in Honolulu. And this house, you know, it's a remarkable house. It's built by Vladimir Osipov, who was born in Russia but grew up in Japan, worked in America, and he then brought the Japanese carpenters over to Hawaii to build this amazing house. And what strikes me about this house is what makes it different from a lot of houses that look quite Japanese is this is really built by Japanese carpenters. And I just feel there's such a specific set of skills, very hard to replicate. You know, it, it's, it's made of wood, but I, I was so interested. You can see、um, my photo album looks. I was, got very interested in literally how the windows were made. I mean, these windows are 70 years old now, and he's, they've done you know, layers of the shutters, the mosquito screen, the glass, and it all just glides perfectly. So, like a traditional building,、uh, which I, I, I find remarkable in a climate like Hawaii, which is frankly a bit of a brutal climate for wood because it's,、uh, it's so wet.、Um, 
highly recommend anyone goes to, to look at the house. And again, you can see it has the Engawa that we keep seeing this feature, this, this transitional uh, space that Takashi, you were talking about. Um, if, if I could just uh, move on, something I was, I was really interested in as well was, was talking about modern architecture. You know, what are young architects doing now? And I was thinking about Japan. I'm just going to, moving on to this house. This is her house in, in Anjo in uh, Aichi, and it's built by um, supposed design architects from Hiroshima. And they, they don't talk about traditional architecture at all, really. They, they say they're, you know, they're not particularly interested, but you can't deny, you look at this and you're seeing post and beam influences, bringing the outside in, in, in quite an extreme way, I have to say in this house. But uh, just to show you another slide from that, this is so you can see the exterior of that house. And again, if, if you if you moving through to their own, this is the place where the architect lives. You know, this is the architects. So I'm not that interested in traditional architecture, but look at it. You know, you've got this raw space. The apartment's just been stripped, but he left the, the washitsu, the, the tatami room. And it creates such an interesting mix, doesn't it, of, of old and new. Uh, this is really a question for both of you. You know, how do you feel that influence in, in modern Japanese architecture? Well, I do think it's a it's a dialogue, it's a conversation that's really interesting. A year ago or so, before we found ourselves in 2020, in the situation we're in now, I was in Japan and I was talking to um, Kishisan, Kishisawaro down in Kyoto, and I hadn't realized that he was a he was a huge fan of the case study program and. I thought that was fascinating because obviously the case study program in turn owes such a huge debt to Japanese architecture and the lessons learned from Neutron, Schindler and Wright um, who were inspired by Japan. So I just think it's just this really, and then, you know, there's the whole generation of young architects in the US looking at Kishi and his generation of Jap Japanese modern architects. So I think, I think it is like this really fascinating sort of conversation between the two as far as, you know, I'm really glad you showed the Ossipov house. And it is true, there's something about Japanese craft and carpentry that, you know, it's just like not, you just don't see it in the US. I think we're burdened here a little bit by bureaucracy and codes and things like that. So I always marvel at sliding glass doors in Japan that have really no hardware. It's just wood frames sliding on in wood grooves and they work perfectly. Um, it's sort of like a perfect tansu. There's no drawer glides or anything mechanical in, in them that make them work just right. I do feel that in California in particular, there is this really deep appreciation of craftsmanship and craft, and that is inspired by Japan. And so even in our houses, um, you do see like that tokonoma image I showed in that construction site, yeah, this deep reverence for this level of craft and really respecting the materials, the tools, and the way things are put together. And, and I see that increasing more and more. So I think that conversation between the two cultures continues. And Professor Igarashi, are you seeing that influence as well, the, the, this sort of dialogue that Takashi san's just talking about? の話があったと思うんで、うちの研究室でま、様々な窓の表彰について分析した中で、ま、映画もあのかなりやってたんですけども、あの、有名な小津安次郎さんの映像も分析していくと、ま、本当に何十にもレイヤー上にですね、襖
し日本の自然の環境ですねあの気候とかに対してどのように、まあ、光や風や熱の環境をコントロールするかっていうところからあの、まあ、開口部の問題を考えた建築家というふうに、まあ、あの位置づけられるかなと思います。今回あのまさに、えー、現代の建築家としてはこういった写真でいくつか紹介しているんですけれどもこれ日本でやったあの窓展っていうのが、えー、ありましてあの窓額展とはまた別に、えー、アートと、えー、建築の、えー、窓の展示をやりました。その時えー、美術館の前に、えー、藤本壮介さんという建築家に、まあ、1分の1の,あのインスタレーションを作ってもらったんですけども、まあ、彼の N ハウスっていう住宅に基づいたインスタレーションです。でこれはあの入れ子状に、えー、と作られた空間でして、えー、美術館では二重の入れ子だったんですけどオリジナルは三重の入れ子になってましてこの入れ子の構造の一番外側の外皮の部分はまあ、いわゆる塀の部分ですね塀の部分が延長して住宅全体を包み込んでいて3番目の、まあ、一番外の箱と2番目の箱の間が、まあ、ある意味での中間地帯になって、まあ、あのさっき紹介していただいた谷尻誠さんたちのああいう,こう、まあ、現代的に解釈された中間地帯、えー、縁側的な空間なんかに、まあ、なっていて非常に新しい直接的には日本的な要素を使ってはいないんだけれども、まあ、ある種の大胆な法案だなという気がしましたこれはあの雪が非常に深く積もる、えー、東北の、えー、弘前にある住宅なんですけども、えー、こういうまあえー、古法案ですねあの右下にあるような、えー、っと下の部分だけ、えー、開いてですね庭を眺めるタイプの、えー、窓が伝統建築にあるんですけど、まあ、まさにそれをこの住宅の中でも、えー、採用しています。僕が行った時はものすごい雪が積もっていた時で、まあ、障子を上げると,、えー、っと雪の風景が、えー、広がっていたっていうのがありました。まあ、あとかなり特殊な窓の作り方としてはこれ左側は京都にある中山秀幸さんの住宅で高さが7メーター幅が2メーターのものすごい大きい窓なんですけどもまあ,あの外の風景を眺める窓でもないんですよねあの電子柱があったりなんか普通の日本の風景でなのでまあこの巨大なカーテンとセットで設計されていて、まあ、このカーテン特注で作っていて。あの窓なんだけれども、まあえー、といわゆる、えー、特殊な、えー、壁のようなものになっていて、まあ、外の風景がお互い丸あの開けると丸見えなんですけど、まあ普段日常生活においてはカーテンで閉ざしたりしています。で右側のカーサオーっていう住宅は木密って言われるあの木造建築が密集した地帯でとても日本的なあの場所なんですけどもぎゅうぎゅうにちっちゃな絵があるところにわざと大きい窓を開けてですねあの普通だったらこれこんな環境だったら閉じるんですけどこれだけ巨大な窓を開けることによって逆にあの周りの,あので反対側の向かいの家は閉じてるんで借景にしちゃってるというかアート作品のようになんか外の風景を切り取るちょっと不思議な操作をしているので、まあ、あの結構現代の,あの日本の建築家もさまざまな窓の試みを行っています。Thanks so much. Now, I realize time is running a little bit short, isn't it? There's always so much to say here. And some people have got some questions. So I hope you don't mind if I just dive, dive straight in and ask some of these questions um, on, on um, attendees' behalf.、Uh, one question here、um, it, there's one for you saying thanks for your insights, Igarashi Sensei. And in all the years studying windows, Which ones have impressed you the most? If, I don't know if you can pick one, one favorite window, but is there a window that particularly strikes you and why? It's a very difficult question. I'm going to ask you to ask me 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 あのリノベーションなんですけども2階建ての建物なんですけど窓が2階建て以上なので少なくとも普通窓は建築より小さいはずなんですけどもあの窓より大きい、まあ、建築これはあの写真家のスタジオでもあるのでかなり特殊なあの劇的な効果をあの狙って作ったんですけども
あの好きというか、まあ、とにかく一番驚きたのは、えー、この窓ですね。はい。Brilliant. That is quite, quite a startling window, I have to say.、Um, next question is for Takashi. The question is、uh, about the windows and the framing of views. They go hand in hand with the Japanese concept of movement or sequential space. Are you influenced by this type of spatial layer in your practice to complement the views? And do you think it's a concept worth pursuing in Western architecture, seeing as it's such a strong antithesis to our preference for a more symmetrical layout? Well, absolutely. I think、um, one of the houses I showed, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, such, we're so limited in time. I wish I could share more images from each of these projects. But this one in particular is one in which there is this real sense of layering that's going on through the experience of the house. And it's very much about choreographing the movement and the haptic senses, primarily visual,、uh, but not necessarily restricted to visual. So, you know, we have, as you approach from the street, Concrete baffle wall that sort of hides the view of the building. But then as you enter, then you see the courtyard that I spoke about a little bit. And then you see a glimpse of the view. But then as you go in, there are further layers of the space. And there are other parts of the house that reveal itself, you know, in interesting ways also. And similarly, this project, if anyone is interested, these are all on our website. You could go look at them. It has internally very interesting composition of spaces. It's actually three pavilions that are meandering between indoor and outdoor spaces. And you can kind of conceptually, depending on how you're using the space, whether it's two people at home on a Sunday or if you're entertaining or what the weather is like outside, the space is very much like a Japanese house, expand and contract s depending on how you deploy the sliding doors. And so there is this sense as you move through the house, and the house is very asymmetrical, even though it's funny, like this, this shot is very symmetrical.、Um, but,、uh, but this in particular arrangement, there is like this asymmetrical flow through the house. And it is all about choreographing the experience and the views. And when I say the views, It's not necessarily just the architecture. It, in fact, it's never just the architecture. I see the architecture as a framing device, one, and also sort of a backdrop a stage or a vessel for, for everything that's happening within them. So the lives within them, but also the furnishings, the art, et cetera. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry, time's so short because everyone wants to ask questions. So I'm going to quickly throw in this question, which I really like as well.、Um, And it's to talk about the idea of private space, the framing of shared landscapes through the lens of a private interior. Is there a difference between how the landscape experienced in private spaces versus public spaces、um, in the Japanese concept of windows? It's an interesting question. Perhaps Igarashi Sensei wants to take that one. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think, I think the, the question is I'm curious to hear the panelists discuss the idea of private space. Which I think is an interesting thing when it comes to windows, isn't it? Because windows are by their nature very much not private. So, how, how you balance that? Well, I know, yeah, Nihon no by, I know, Jutak Jijo, but I think America to dive to go no there. あのせあんまり広くないところに建築作るんですよね、住宅を。そうするとあの開,く開きたいんだけど、あんまり開くと外から丸見えになっちゃうっていうところで。やっぱその辺のこう調整が非常に難しいし、まあ、逆に建築のテーマにもえなるんですね。ただうまくいかない場合は大体あの窓作ってるんだけども完全に閉め切った窓をあの作って、まあ、あのいう住宅がやっぱり世の中にいっぱいあるんで、まあ、その辺をどうやって建築的に解くかっていうのはあの日本の課題でアメリカだと多分それなりに広い敷地の中に住宅があるのでそこはそんなに気にしなくてもいいんじゃないかっていう気がしますがどうなんでしょう柳さん。Yeah, well, well, last, last comment, yeah, last comment.、Um, so、um, it's true our sites are a little bigger, but you know we have same, similar issues, especially in LA. Oftentimes they're not as big as you might think. So for instance, back to this house, I mean,、oh, that, is, that is a fence right at the sidewalk. I think privacy in LA is very important. Because you do have the sense in LA that you want to enjoy this indoor outdoor environment. And it's, it's sort of like a respite from the rest of the world. And so, how do you do that on a small lot? So, we try to, like, this is in Venice and the lots are quite small. 
we try to maximize the sense of outdoor space without giving too much away to um, the neighbors. It's impossible to shut them out entirely, like you can see the neighbors um, a little bit, which I think is fine. I mean, it's a sort of a reference to where you are in the world, but we very much try to manage privacy in, in primary areas. And we don't want to create a situation where you know, you have to draw the shutters or the curtains because, you know, we don't, we don't want to mitigate, you know, the best effects of having windows. So in this case, also, there's a house right next door and we could have had a window, but instead we sacrificed a little bit of interior space to create this small courtyard that gives you a view to an exterior space and the sky and nature. And you get a little sense of fresh air without compromising your sense of privacy at all. So I, I think it's possible, and these are ways in which we try to do that. Thank you. Gosh, there's so much to talk about. Oh, sorry, please finish. Yeah. Ah, いいですか？あの、どうぞどうぞ。あ、今のエピソードで思い出したんですけど、あのまあ今回サザエさんのえっと漫画からいくつか窓に関するエピソードを紹介してるんですけど、これ左のものがすごい日本的な事情をよく表していて、これ50年代に書かれた漫画なんですけども、あこのエピソードは。モダン住宅っていうガラス張りの住宅をこういいなってこうえパンフレットを本を見てたんですけどあの来客が来た時に居留守ができなくてやっぱりやめようっていうまあちょっとそういうエピソードなんですけどもまああのこれすごくあの当時の日本人があのモダン建築に持っていたイメージをある意味で反映しているかもしれません。でこのサザエさんという漫画今回あのいくつかこういう窓やあるいは、えー、障子とかを介した人のコミュニケーションのあり方を結構あのいろいろ紹介していてですね、今の日本で少し失われた側面も実はあるんですけれども、今回あのコロナ禍でやっぱなかなか外に出れないんだけれども、こういう窓を介した人々のコミュニケーションの重要性っていうのはきっと多分改めて認識されてると思うんですね。そういった時にこの窓をあのステージに見立てるであるとか、あの窓を通じて両側からこう文字のコミュニケーションを行うとかってそういうアイディアっていうのは結構あの実は今の時代に改めて読み直すと面白いんじゃないかなっていうふうにあの思いました。あはい以上です。Yeah, I think you're absolutely right that COVID has thrown up the the value of the window. Certainly in Japan, where the three C's have been talking about, we have to avoid these. Closed spaces. We need lots of、uh, ventilation. So people have been talking about windows non-stop in Japan. So I think that's been a big change. And also reflecting on on high rises. You know that ventilation. You cannot open a, a high rise window. So that's another. You know, an interesting rethink. Is that what we want anymore? Do we want all this mechanical、um, ventilation? So I'm really sorry we're out of time.、Uh, there's just so much to talk about. I, I really I feel like we need a whole other hour. But thank you very much to Professor Taro Igarashi. Thank you, Takashi and I as well. And I'm going to hand back to、uh, Yuko Kaifu here. Thank you so very much, Fiona, Dr. Igarashi, and、uh, Mr. Yanai as well for fascinating, fascinating discussions. You covered certainly the traditional, contemporary, the East and West, and there is some common thread that appears through different dimensions, different scopes. So um, was, um, we, we could definitely. Have indulged yourself in hearing at least one another one more hour, but、uh, I um, um, we that that's for another time. There are so many viewers as well who signed in today, so I really appreciate、uh, people who listened in today as well. I、um, like to、uh, prompt、uh, the audience uh, that uh, when you exit the program after it finishes, you'll be redirected to our survey page. Please take a moment to fill it out so that we can continue offering high-quality programs in the areas of your interest. And I also like to、uh, introduce a few of our upcoming online programs. Please direct your attention to the screen for information on a couple of、uh, those programs that are coming up very soon.、Uh, December the 10th, we'll be hosting Olympic webinar part two, the power of the game for communities, featuring Tokyo 2021. And、uh, the 15th of December, we will be hosting the webinar called "Journey Through Japan: Chiune Sugihara Story of Compassion." So I hope that、uh, you'll be able to tune in for those programs as well. But、uh, thank you again, speakers. I mean, this is a wonderful, wonderful webinar.、Um, Appreciate it,、um, and I hope the audience would、uh, be signing up for our upcoming programs as well. 
See you again soon. Thank you.